Interesting thing just happened. Uh, Jackson Lions Club members came out yesterday and marked the streets for Dandelion Days. Well, the Jackson Street Sweeper just came by this morning and has uh, erased all the marks that the Lions Club members put on the street. So Jackson Lions Club members better get out to uh, Main Street and remark it because uh, most of your markings are now gone. So <laughs> I'm not laughing at anyone. I'm just laughing at the situation. So Anyway, in the news for today, it is a Tuesday, the 12th day of March. Jackson City Council moved forward with a pair of new ordinances for the city, including changes to how the city awards contracts and approved a construction contract for street repairs. The council held a second reading and final approval vote for an ordinance for water use. The new law makes permanent several measures, such as not allowing yard watering to flood streets that were adopted as temporary measures during the California drought. A first reading was also approved for an ordinance making changes to how the city of Jackson handles contracts for various services. The ordinance ups the limits on what the city can spend without council approval or a formal bidding process. Public works projects greater than $60,000 would now require council approval, while previously any project greater than $5,000 would have required a council vote. The new ordinance would also require a formal bidding process for projects over $200,000 in cost. Currently, anything costing more than $20,000 required a formal bidding process. And speaking of bids, the council approved a construction bid of $52,000 to Vinciguera Construction for the repairs of a storm-damaged culvert located on Jackson Gate Road. And Amador County Sheriff deputies were called out early yesterday after a 62-year-old man went missing. According to the Sheriff Department, dispatch received a call from a woman stating that her 62-year-old father, Robert Hendrick, had not returned from a hiking trip he had taken the previous day. She explained her father had been visiting from out of town and decided to go on a hike in the area east of the Gold Country campgrounds in Pine Grove. Several deputies responded and began searching the surrounding woods. After searching about two hours, deputies located Hendrick tangled in some bushes down a steep ravine. Deputies were able to free the man and assist him back to their vehicles about a half mile away. Hendrick told them he got lost, fell down in a ravine in the dark, and came stuck in the thick brush. He was checked by medics with American Legion Ambulance, found to be in good condition, and reunited with his family. And a Copperopolis man has died after being hit by a pickup truck. According to the San Andreas CHP, it happened Sunday evening around 8 p.m. north of Bow Drive as 75-year-old David Best was walking along Little John Road and was hit by a vehicle driven by Joseph Rabinu of Copperopolis. CHP adds that Rabinu immediately returned to the scene and is fully cooperating with the investigation. It's not believed that drugs or alcohol were a factor in the incident. Details regarding the crash are still being investigated. If you have any information that could assist the investigation, contact the CHP in San Andreas at 754-3541. And three members of the Calavera Sheriff Office moving up the ranks. 19-year veteran Lieutenant Rachel Whitting will take on the role of Division Commander in the Custody Bureau at the County Jail. Sergeant Ken Grognet, with 15 years, moves to the position of Detective Sergeant, supervising detectives in the Investigation Division. Finally, with three years on the force, Corporal Brian Cockey has been assigned to the Patrol Division to take on the job of training new deputies. Sheriff Rick DiBasilio announced the promotions last week and after more than a decade the clement stampede will return later this year steaming uh, teaming up rather with the california cowboy pro rodeo association the clements buckaroos will bring professional rodeo back friday september 20th and saturday september 21st the clement stampede rodeo began in 1942 when a small group of buckaroo members held a purely non-professional roundup drawing an estimated 1,500 people. The club went on to produce the annual stampede for more than 60 years until rising production and ground maintenance costs halted the annual event. 
Learn more about this year's event by visiting ClementsBuckaroos.com. Applications are also now being accepted for the Clements Miss and Junior Miss Stampede. Details are available on that same website. And the Calaveras Chamber of Commerce now accepting applications for its 2019 Leadership Calaveras program. Starting in June, the program is designed to encourage the development of community leaders, identify local issues and needs, and explore solutions. Leadership Calaveras is a 10-month commitment, providing participants educational experiences to increase awareness and knowledge of organizations in Calaveras County through hands-on activities, tours, and panel discussions. Participants meet once a month to explore topics like ag and wine, natural resource, history and diversity, government and law enforcement, health and human services, education, arts and culture, recreation and tourism, nonprofit organizations, and media. Tuition for Leadership Calaveras is only $550 for chamber members, $650 for non-members, and pays for all materials, a shirt, meals, some group transportation, admission to the chamber's annual dinner, and the graduation dinner. For more, including a registration packet, visit calaveras.org or call 754-5400. The registration deadline, April 19th. And that is a look at local news on this Gold Country Tuesday morning. From the KVGC News Center, I'm J.D. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather 24 hours a day, you can always visit our website, kvgcradio.com.